Hi everybody, it is March 16, 2019, another gray day here in Anderson, South Carolina, and I'm going to bring you some uh, footage of the damage from our bomb cyclone. More and more damage, uh, floods, Nebraska, Iowa, hard hit. Here, um, yes, this is the recent development of our rains that we saw last year that we're seeing this year rain just destroying infrastructure destroying roads washing away bridges which you will see um, here this is in um, Indiana and they have plans to survey storm damage in southern Indiana after high winds hail and possible tornadoes swept across the state. Yes, they don't... You know, we used to know when tornadoes hit and when they didn't, but now, oh, the high winds bringing damage. And I'm going to show you. The damage is very selective and it sure doesn't look like a tornado uh, to me, but they're claiming seven tornadoes hit in Alabama on Thursday. What is happening that rain is taking out roads? Okay, one theory, Gwen Towers, the extremely low frequencies that they set off through the ground, weakening, weakening roads, weakening the ground below it, and then they bring on these torrential downpours. And look at this. You know, there are so many road closures um, from this storm in many states. So the flooding and storms in Nebraska. Really? Okay. Look at this. And unfortunately, well, let me see if I can... Um, enlarge these pictures. Yes, I can. Okay. Really? So, that's from rain. We have a tremendous amount of infrastructure damage between last year and this year. Nebraska, governor's office, a lot of people have been evacuated. A lot of homes have been flooded. Interstate flooding, Interstate 29. Flooding in DeWitt. Now, farm area and a lot of farms have been flooded out once again. to everything so if you want to watch everything uh, all the videos in their full then just click on the links below but there is a tremendous amount of damage and so many look at this I mean this is a farm the farm is destroyed It's really sad to see this, guys. Whole towns have been flooded out. This bomb cyclone, I don't need to tell you that it was manufactured. You know it. But 
that this persists year after year after year. We see so much damage, so many people and so many four-leggeds and so much life itself destroyed. It's just going to continue and continue and continue. You know, people are just not seeing what they need to see in order to fight against this weather warfare. Stranded cattle, road closures, bridges washed away. Sorry, rain did not cause this. Uh, prior uh, to the recent years, flooded farm. How do you think these people are feeling? Highway flooding. And unfortunately, people are having a difficult time getting around because of all of the road closures. Now, oh boy, there are more there's a lot of pictures um, and it it goes on and on. Town after town after town flooded out. Once again, prime farmland. It reminds me of the floods in Missouri, 2011. And they are still warning people to be prepared for more flooding. South Dakota, um, Iowa, Ohio. We did not see this kind of damage from rainstorms and I really, I do not understand why people aren't um, questioning what is happening here. No, this is just unprecedented. And this is all Kansas. Homes just giving away, ground just collapsing. People being rescued, people in shelters. Another bridge gave away. Calves being rescued. People have been displaced in the last few days, and more people will be, based on what they're claiming that we're going to be seeing more flooding in these areas. Rivers, streams, creeks, everything overflowing, lakes. Boy. It doesn't stop, does it? Endless, 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 endless. Okay, that man was safely rescued.
uh, my computers. Um, not doing too well. If you haven't suffered these consequences, then all you can do is consider yourself lucky. Look at this. Roads just giving away. Okay, well, um, this should beg questions in everybody's, everybody's brain and a dam collapse. Um, they should be really wondering what the hell is going on. with all of this damage. And really the only thing that I can think of are the extremely low frequencies or frequency hits you know, coming from satellites or um, radar perhaps turned on way too intensely uh, these directional frequencies where they can hit targets that they want to hit. More rescues. So, um, this is the tornado damage and they are claiming that seven tornadoes are confirmed to have hit Alabama once again, or Georgia. No? It looks like Alabama. Some tornadoes hit Georgia. That was Thursday. Now, I want you to take a look at this damage. And searing off the side as if it's like, you know, a saw that comes along and just sears off some of the building. Um, very odd tornado damage. So you see, you know, roof damage. But these are selective hits. Now, the, the tornado damage that we've always seen is the tornado grounds and then just uh, creates damage in its path. In its path. It doesn't um, take down one structure, um, take off some of the roof, take out a tree over here, and then take off some of the tree that is still standing. It doesn't just take down one tree here and leave everything surrounding it okay. Look at these trees. Please look at these trees. And look at the trees in the videos that I'm going to be showing. Um, this is what our trees look like here in Anderson, South Carolina. And I'm sure this is what your trees look like everywhere across the country. Our trees are dying. They are covered with fungal disease. And no one is paying attention to it. So a tornado flips over this trampoline, snaps this power pole, takes down a tree, uh, and somehow just doesn't do any damage. It sears off the top of this tree, some damage to this tree, but the home uh, still looks okay. So there's 43 pictures. When I first clicked on this uh, page, I was able to get to all 43. Now I can only get to 10. Click on the link below and check out these pictures and you tell me if this is tornado damage. All right, um, storms leave hefty cleanup for tri-staters. This is in the greater Cincinnati area. Toppled trees blew the siding off of barns, forced people uh, to wait in basement shelters, um, a hotel, 
The employees had to run up and down seven flights of stairs to ensure every guest had been evacuated to safety during one tornado warning. Um, I don't know if we've ever had to evacuate people for a tornado before. With a crash, the wind separated the roof of his BP, BP uh, gas station, I don't know, from the rest. Um, Hebron, meteorologists determined a downburst destroyed the high school, baseball dugout, downburst, likely had winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Yeah. You know, oh well, we're going to survey the damage. We think tornadoes hit. Likely that the winds were 60 to 70 miles per hour. Power outages, uh, but this was two days ago. Um, for nearly 16,000 and 400 in Cincinnati. Historic, Historic flooding, flooding in parts of the Midwest. Midwest. Rivers, Rivers rising, rising after heavy rain, rain from, from the same, same storm. storm. In Wisconsin, in Wisconsin, the governor, the governor has declared a state of emergency in Nebraska. Nebraska. Preparations, Preparations underway to shut down a nuclear power, power plant, plant along the rising Missouri River. River. And, a and a farmer was killed, killed trying to rescue a stranded motorist, two others still missing. So it does pose a very significant risk to our first responders. That's why we ask the, the evacuees to you know, heed our advice and uh, don't wait until it's too late. Make sure you get to an area of safety uh, before it turns into an actual rescue. And at least one dam has failed in Nebraska, another at high risk of failing. An historic at high risk of failing. Mobile, Iowa is currently in a state of emergency. Spring flooding is not uncommon in Moville, but this year's flood flight is a different story. At least five houses have already been evacuated. Do you see these trees? Do you see how diseased these trees are? Okay. Now, everybody who is somewhat educated should understand that these trees are weak. You see the fungal disease that is covered it's this tree is systemically diseased which means it's weak which means even slight winds can topple these trees so when you have all of these trees coming down and uh, hitting homes and causing a lot of uh, power outages because they're hitting power lines um, and then they claim that it's a tornado or extremely high winds. It doesn't have to be. But when people look at all of these trees down, they think, oh my God, a tornado did come across or a downburst or a microburst or a... These trees are so unbelievably sick. And Mayor Fisher says he was not expecting a flood of this magnitude. We, you know, figured that we had time. Well, last night when we, uh, everybody went to bed, uh, it was up. And this morning when we got up, it was is what you see right now is flooded. Okay. And like I said, it's the worst that we've, I have seen since I've been in town. And that's 43 years. Fisher says the damage he's seeing already is more significant than what the much-talked-about mid-90s flood produced. Candace Waldris lives in Moville. She says she's one of the lucky ones. First couple days, our basement flooded, and we've got a lot of that out. Um, but otherwise, my house is really good. Just a little flooding in the basement. Wildridge manages the local Casey's, whether it's groceries or gas. She says she's trying to help others however she can. Can I get to Sioux City? How can I get to work? Um, when can I get to work? When can I get to Sioux City? Um, is this road open? Is that road open? We can help our customers the best that we can and let them know where to go. State troopers say they're doing their best to get people where they need to go. I really do hope that when you're watching videos, that you're paying close attention to what the environment looks like. Look at every single tree here. Every tree is covered with fungal disease. And yes, they spray fungi. I want you to take a look at One Pacific Redwood, his video that he posted yesterday. And he explains the weather manipulation that 
is uh, taking place, but it's very obvious and everybody, you don't need to be a meteorologist to recognize something is very wrong right here because Mother Nature does not work in right angles. Right angle, right angle, okay? So, very sharply defined line here. And it really is very unfortunate that we have people who just refuse to do the research. Now, everybody knows that they conduct weather modification to enhance rainfall, snowfall. Why isn't that in itself begging questions? Here, the bridge, another bridge, uh, washes away in Nebraska. Here goes the Mormon Canal Bridge right there. It just washed out. It is gone. That is unreal. So this is in Norfolk, um, South Dakota. And in Norfolk, one man is still missing after getting swept away by the rushing water this morning, where water levels are also at record highs. Now, as a precaution, city officials have evacuated nearly a third of the community. And tonight, more than 1,000 people finding a safe place to stay at community shelters. They were like, we're evacuating, we need to get out, we need to pack a bag. So it was very stressful. We didn't like know what to pack. We didn't really know what to expect. Northeast Community College was one of the largest evacuation areas as many student dorms overlook the river. Yeah, I live on the first floor, so I woke up and found out that my roommates already had a little bit of water on their side. And so they were trying to dry their books. Some had water damage. Once they said we had to evacuate, we moved quickly into action and went ahead and got these students loaded up on our buses and began moving them to the church here. The kids are able to play, they're able to watch the movies. We've got rooms for studying, we've got game rooms, they've got sleeping rooms. Norfolk's first Christian church is one of five shelters hosting evacuees. So much food, hundreds of bottles of water. People have brought everything from toothpaste to pillows and blankets. Uh, everybody's reaching out saying, how can we help? I've never been evacuated from somewhere before. Precautionary evacuations if the levy did not hold. I mean, without that, we would have severe destruction and life, life safety problems would be immense. But signs of improvement late Thursday. So seeing a leveling um, of water levels on the north. That's good. Now, I include that as well, just to see, j just to show you how much disruption is being caused all over the country because of this weather warfare. And this is Hornick, um, South Dakota. Tim, still a lot of unanswered questions for the town of Hornick. No word back yet on when they're going to be able to get back into their homes. However, they are t trying their best to just take steps to move forward. Historic flooding continues throughout Hornick, Iowa. Main Street collecting over three feet of water Friday afternoon, keeping over 200 residents from their homes. Nobody is allowed back into Hornick at this time. The water levels is not going down very fast. We got to get rid of a lot of water, but for it's safe to people get back in. In the meantime, Hornick residents gather for a town hall meeting hoping for answers. Hornick address and your phone number. Just in case something crazy happens and we need to find you. In a packed Sloan Fire Hall, folks seeing their community as they never thought possible. Homes underwater for the first time. Heartbreaking because, you know, we're a very small community and we're very close-knit and, and many of us have worked all our lives for what we have and it's, and it's difficult. I guess it helped to look at this video because his house looks like it's a little bit drier than most, but it's awful. It's awful what's going on here. Officials discussed cleanup efforts, but many questions are unanswered. People. Weather warfare. Okay, do some research, please.
Metro in South Sioux City, flooding conditions uh, have uh, not been of the uh, terrible nature so far, but folks along Scenic Park and the campgrounds there continue to prepare. Several campers uh, there, in fact, relocated today. KCA United reporter Jessica Watson explained what's going on there now. Deanna Hagberg is Dakota County's emergency manager. She says of all the counties in Nebraska, they are the lucky ones. Nevertheless, she says they're working hard to prepare for flooding expected on Saturday. It is important that they start looking at their basements, uh, pulling personal stuff up, anything that they don't want damaged. Make sure they have their important papers in plastic bags, keep them with them. One South Sioux City campground has already been forced to relocate campers. South Sioux City's park manager says they're ready for what comes. Uh, it's part of what we do and, and we'll take care of the damages and we'll get it back open so we'll be ready for, for a good summer of uh, camping. Okay. March blizzard caused plenty of problems as it moved east. In Nebraska, there is a state of emergency because of flooding. It's forced more than a thousand people from their homes. The frozen ground prevents any water from soaking into the ground, so the flooding could last through the weekend. March blizzard. If anybody has heard of more flooding that occurred today, leave a comment below. And I said North thinking it was South Dakota. It may have been Nebraska, sorry. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, we switched locations on you uh, just since that last hit. We're now along Martin Lake. That's just a few minutes northeast of uh, Fremont. As you can see here, much different situation. A lot of flooding along here, taking a look at that impacting residents along here. The home behind me just surrounded by water. Local dispatch uh, here, they say that there has been no mandatory evacuation, even though the water levels here at the lake clearly high. We were just told by a neighbor that the folks who own this home it's just a vacation cottage, so thankfully they are not here right now having to deal with this. Neighbors, though, other ones having to live here year-round, uh, deciding to stay put at this point. We well, want to point out two things. First off, it is still raining here, so that's just going to add to the already high water levels that we're seeing out here right now. And number two, as you can see, just kind of along here, there is still snow on the ground, so as it gets a little bit warmer, Aaron's been talking about those temperatures getting into the 50s and higher. That's just going to also make matters worse for residents out here along Martin Lake. Lakes, streams, rivers, all flooding. Flooding. As flood evacuations continue, many people here in northeast Wisconsin are being affected. NBC 26's Jennifer Nazza was at a shelter and has more. Behind these doors, the American Red Cross tells us dozens are without a home, taking shelter here at Preble High School. The Red Cross says more than 150 people are displaced in northeast Wisconsin, and the number keeps growing. They're currently assisting people at reception centers in Brown County and Fond du Lac. One of those people is Greg Kempkin, who was rescued in a banana boat from his Green Bay home early this morning. He says he's experienced flooding before, but this is the worst he's ever seen, with high waters reaching up to his chest. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I mean, it's like, here I am awake. Good morning, Greg. Wonderful. I, what is it? Is it coming through the roof? Is it raining that hard? But from pre previous experience and having some water in the basement at this place, I knew it was coming through the foundation. The Red Cross says they anticipate more flooding, so they encourage people to be responsible for their safety and offer these tips. Think about a shelter you could go to if you are forced to evacuate. All right. Well, uh, Jordan, I believe, Minnesota. Water forced hundreds of families out of their homes in Jordan last night. And it could be a while before it's safe for them to go back because that water is still rising. This is happening right along the Sand Creek River at the Valley Green Mobile Home Community. That is where we find Ellery McArdle this morning live in Jordan. So Ellery, what's the situation right now? Well, the guys, the barricades are still up in this mobile home park, and right now we're getting a good indication and a good reminder of why those barricades are still up. So if you remember last half hour, I showed you there were three cars stuck in the water. Well, just moments ago, we saw a truck driving down this street. The water was spraying up, and off in the distance, you can see the truck is still there. So I don't know if they're stuck, but we've also seen another car just drive down the street, and the water... Did you hear her say the water was spraying up? Have you seen those videos where water is gushing up? 
where it's a storm drain, it should be going down. And yes, I do think that they close off the storm drains and cause a lot of this flooding. Water is still really high. We know at one point yesterday that the water was two to three feet deep. And I just got off the phone with the command center and they say that they have emergency management out here uh, checking the water levels. But about a few minutes ago, they could not give me an exact update on that. Now, this all started, this flooding started when an ice dam formed in the Sand Creek and then created this flash flooding in this neighborhood. So I want to show you that video from yesterday. I mean, you can see how high the water was last night. The Scott County Sheriff says there are about 1,000 people who live in this neighborhood and of about 300 homes, about half of those homes evacuated. School buses came in to help pick up stranded people. Most people went to stay with family or friends, but 47 of them went to a shelter at Jordan High School where the Red Cross is helping them. And when we talked with people last night, they just generally seemed surprised at how fast the water came in. I came out just before it was too bad. I thought it was regular flooding. And by the time I got back around, we couldn't get in anymore. The police were blocking everything off. Never seen it before. Uh, never experienced anything like it. Uh, the rain, it came on so fast. The flooding, it came on so fast. How often do we hear that? Well, the village of DeForest had been preparing for something like this, but hadn't really seen it come to reality until last night. Of course, homes along the Yahara dealing with the overflow of this river, but homeowners far away from bodies of water also dealing with lots of flooding, too. So this is my backyard. The entire block completely flooded. John Nauman documenting the scene from his DeForest home porch yesterday. Today, he and his wife, Samantha, sharing what happened to us, explaining that their home nowhere near any bodies of water, but on a low point. The exterior staircase to my basement. Got clobbered as ice and snow melted, filling bodies of water, giving it nowhere else to go. There was a current coming east to west right down this way. Right here. The Naumans have lived here for nine years. They've experienced water in their basement, but weren't expecting anything like this. Hard to see. This is all our tubs floating. Never been this, this bad before, not by a long shot. Right. That's another uh, sentence that we hear repeated. Never seen it this bad. And... Unfortunately, this site, you know, if you click on it, you'll see they have a lot of videos that I can't play. Maybe you'll be able to play. But here, cattle being dug out after major snowstorm. Okay. Uh, we have seen the unprecedented unfolding over and over and over again. I guess many people just... Well, it's climate change. It's global warming, even though we have presented so much evidence uh, that it is not that. It is technology that man now has, has had for a long time. This weather modification has been going on, certainly since even before Vietnam. But Vietnam really exposed to the public the weather modification that they were conducting in Vietnam, bringing on torrential downpours to flood the, the roadways so the Viet Cong could not um, have any access to. You know, they, they pretty much stopped their travel. And this weather modification it has been perfected, but yes, it is because we have so many people who refuse to do the research on geoengineering and the toxic chemicals and heavy metals that are killing all life. But as you can see, yeah, we, we have a massive amount of tree death already. And we have a m even more trees 
that are dying all over the country. And it's not just in the United States. So it should beg questions. And people really do need to start thinking about what is taking place because if we don't marshal a army to get this stopped, well, those who have yet to suffer the consequences will soon suffer the consequences because this will just continue until people put away their uh, you know, trivial, um, what, what separates us, what divides us, these trivial things, if, if we can just put them aside and unite to get this stopped, well, that would be great. All links are below. And I am so sorry for all those who are having to suffer the consequences of this bomb cyclone.